So we continue down our path of going to each different position group at LSU and the impact that they will have, in my personal opinion, for not just right now, but for in the future, how the depth lines up. We've done all of the defense. We've done defensive tackle. We've done edge. We've done linebacker. We've done safety. We've done the boundary. We've done all of them. Now we come to the offensive side of the football. And tonight I want to start it off with the most positive that we can, that being the offensive line. You know, I've seen a lot of you in the comments on the show here or on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, that will say something to the effect that O-line is the only place where we're recruiting at a national championship level. I don't know if I necessarily completely agree with that. I think we got to see some of these positions play out. I will say that the offensive line, by far and without question, is your best unit on this team. Not only from the five starters that are coming back, or I say five starters, but four starters, and DJ Chester, who did see a lot of time last year, that comes back. And I thought DJ Chester was arguably your best center a year ago. I don't know if not only that LSU's offensive line might not be one of the best in the SEC. Guys, not only do I think it's the best potential offensive line in the country, I'm not a 1,000% sold that that entire unit is not the best unit in the country in general. Now, there are a lot of talented groups. You know, on my national show, I talked about on Rafino and Joe's show, I think Miami's got a very, really good wide receiver room with Jacoby George and Xavier Restrepo. You look at Oregon, too. That running back room for Ohio State, the defense in general for Georgia, There are a lot of really good position groups all across the country. But I don't know if if any position group has five guys better than the five offensive linemen that you have. Now, do I think that the guard play needs to get a little bit better if I'm being very picky? Yeah, I do. Or I will. I thought, obviously, against Florida State last year, they struggled. That's okay. Because they came back against Alabama and, in my opinion, did really freaking good. They came back against Texas A&M and played really freaking good. And you know what's wild, man? Do you know how often under the Orgeron regime we talked about injuries? You know, Garrett Dellinger was actually one of those guys that fought through injuries under the Ed Orgeron era and even stayed here. Emory Jones missed the Mississippi State game some or maybe the whole thing. Pretty sure it was him. Yeah, it was him. So many different scenarios could have played out for your offensive line last year due to injury. You really didn't have a lot. You were really good. Look, I could bore you with numbers, and I could bore you with what they did in the run game a season ago. I could bore you with... Hey, man, they were a big reason that helped Jaden Daniels stay upright last season. You know, Jaden had a lot of clean pockets. You know, like Princely Human Yellen from Florida against Emory Jones did not do anything. Did nothing. And Princely Human Yellen might be one of the top SEC's pass rushers in the country. He's at Ole Miss now, was at Florida last year, got absolutely railroaded by Emory Jones. Will Campbell didn't give up a sack last season. Will Campbell literally has only given up one sack in his entire two-year career. How many plays has that dude played already and only given up a sack? I will bore you, I will give you this because I want to make sure that, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn. Guys, your running back room, Josh Williams, Logan Diggs, Caleb Jackson, all of them ran for over five yards of carry last season. All of them had at least, well, Caleb Jackson had four, at least five rushing touchdowns. Jaden obviously had 10, but Logan did seven, Josh Williams five. 
you had a really solid core running back who had some really big holes to work with. You know, I even remember when we talk about that Florida State game, Josh Williams being able to bust one to the outside in a really big, really big game when you finally started running the ball a little bit outside. So I look at this unit. I just don't know if they're not the best in the country. Now, you, ha you're, you have two bookends that are going to be first-round picks. Going to be first-round picks. And I just don't know if you've ever had a duo like this along the offensive line. And let me tell you, man, you better cherish it. Now, Brad Davis has recruited that position extremely well, obviously. Weston Davis, the five-star from Texas, Coming in, you got guys like Tyree Adams coming in or, or come in and now developed. That room, that unit is so freaking good, man, that it's starting to become one of the elite units in not only the SEC, but the country. Now, you're going to have to really lean on this unit, really, really lean on this unit. You know, Joe Sloan calling plays, probably assisted by Brian Kelly, especially in the run game. Brad Davis, especially in the run game. Guys, they showed us a lot of different things in the spring, running a lot of more zone stuff, a lot of more wide zone principles. Pulling Will Campbell, getting him featured out in the running game, getting to the second level, really, really playing some power football with that really good elite offensive line. Guys, they dominated all spring. Now, I don't know if it is mainly due to the fact that your D-line was not really good. I don't agree with anybody that has questions about the interior offensive line or any specific questions you, I know that you don't, would have at anything at tackle. I think if there is a question mark, it would be DJ Chester. Maybe the guards had, and Garrett Dellinger, Miles Frazier had some moments. Because they dominated this spring. The, the things that they're doing this summer, Will Campbell, obviously and clearly, being a leader this offseason, they are just running through things. I thought that the Texas a &M game was the most impressive game that they had. Now... They got stuffed a little bit early in the run game, but as the game went on, you ran the ball right out. Guys, this was the best defensive line you faced all year last year outside of Florida State. So from one game to the last, I think you played two very comparable defensive lines. Statistically, they were like three and four. I think A&M was the third best defensive line unit ranked last year, and then at four was Florida State. And you did what you needed to do. But you're going to have to lean on them. You're going to have to have your running backs really step up. You know, I was watching, side note, we'll talk about running backs next week. Side note, this offensive line paired with a guy like Caleb Jackson and Caden Durham makes me very excited. Very excited about what they could do. You know, we, we're talking about Garrett Nussmeyer a lot. We're talking about these wide receivers and what they can do, I think we are missing so much about Caleb Jackson and Caden Durham. That's getting, because, guys, you're going to run the football a lot. That is what you're going to try to get downhill and do. You're going to try to bully dudes. Guys, LSU next season, it will try to bully dudes, and then they'll throw the football around. I'm not saying that they won't. But, like, if there's a drive – where Garrett Nussmeyer throws three times and there's a 10-play a drive and they run it seven times and they're just dicking you down, no pause or lube, and they're dicking you down the field, that's what I think the philosophy of this team is going to be and can be. When you have a unit that's this good and you're winning in the trenches, because so many different things open up for you. So many different things. If there is a question mark, I just question the question, the depth, maybe at guard, maybe. But I don't know if I do, if that happens. Like, I, I could see a scenario if you have an injury at guard or something happens. I guess I don't know if Weston Davis 
can't get to 300 pounds by the end of this by the end of the semester or end of the summer, excuse me, and then he can't play right tackle for you. I don't know if Tyree Adams can't play right tackle for you if you needed him to. That's just how deep you are. Hey, you have an injury, we're going to replace him with a five star. You know who does that, man? You know who did that in the trenches. The only two teams that have done that in the trenches ever has been Nick and Kirby. Ever. Ohio State does it sometimes defensively. You got to give them that. But that's what the elite unit that you're looking at right now. We'll see how all this progresses. We'll see how all this goes. But if you're talking about me, I think you're going to be a. I, I think you have the potential that if you want to slow things down, you can. And, and I will be real with you. I don't know if it's not the style you don't need to go to. I am not. I am not. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I am not afraid of Garrett Nussmeyer needing to go into a game and throw it 40 times. I'm really not. Like, if he needs to to win, and which could be a possibility if this defense isn't good again, I, I, I really could see a scenario where you can win any game by Garrett Nussmeyer having 40 passing attempts. Like, and I, and I do believe that. I just don't think you're going to be there, man. I think that you're going to get back to some extent. I don't know if you get back to a lot more like that you were in 22. 